The common laws, that body of laws um, and authorities among the judicial branch, that was kind of a common um, heirloom that the people of America brought with them when they began to set up their colonial governments. And of course, aspects of the common law that inform so many aspects of the daily lives of the colonists, uh, from tort to contract to property to real estate uh, to ordinary criminal law, protections of defendants who were faced with accusations of crime, a large body of judge-made law uh, that came from England. Now, under the common law, even if uh, these rules and regulations were developed by the courts, they were always subject to change or abrogation or modification by Parliament itself. Parliament always had ultimate control over the common law because Parliament, of course, represented the will of the people themselves. Rules then that developed under common law reflected the idea that the government, when it sits, reflects and sits as the people themselves. These common law rules that show so much deference to Parliament and uh, rules that of course included um, sedition and the right to punish people for criticizing or interfering with the operations of government. The reason why those rules were there is of course government uh, in a parliamentary system represented the people themselves so to criticize the crown or to criticize the government, you were, you were actually criticizing the people of England. That wasn't the way rules and ideas developed under the American system. Under the American system, the people represented their will not through the operations of government, but through a written constitution. The people stood apart and stood as judges over their government. That meant there had to be new rules when it came to laws uh, regarding defamation and sedition and freedom of speech. Common law rules and methodologies that might be appropriate in a parliamentary system were not clearly at all going to map onto what was happening under the American system. 